welcome to Novi Sad, Serbia's second biggest city with a population of about 250,000 inhabitants. Novi Sad sits along the mighty Danube River. And across the, the Petro Varadin Fortress, which has history going as far back as the Paleolithic uh, ages. But the first constructions of the fortress date back to the year 1235 AD when King Bela of Hungary ordered the construction of the fort or what was at the time a monastery. And then throughout history it took different shapes fortified to deal with uh, Turkish forces aka the Ottoman Empire who once ruled over the area in 1694 Serb merchants created a colony across the river from what was now the fortre a fortress for the Habsburg Empire who had uh, retaken control from the Ottoman Empire. The Serbian people uh, had to live across the river from the fortress because there was a rule of of the Habsburg Empire uh, that you couldn't be uh, of orthodox religion living in a town of the empire. And that is why they lived across the Danube in what was called Serb City. Which wasn't really much of a city 1720, there was only about 112 Serbian homes in Ratzenstad, which was the German word for Serb city. But later, it officially gained the name Novi Sad when it was declared by the Habsburg Empire as being a free royal city. Which allowed the city to prosper and develop, attracting more and more Serbian people to it. And it became the largest city inhabited by Serbs. And Novi Sad became the cultural and political center for the Serbian people who did not have their own national state at the time. So Novi Sad kind of served as the unofficial uh, capital for politics and culture and for that reason it was often called the Serbian Athens. In 1843 it was estimated that the population of Novi Sad was now of 
17,332. Then in 1848, Novi Sad took part in a revolution which uh, resulted in a Serbian autonomous region within the Austrian Empire. But then in 1867, when the Austria and Hungary halves of the empire uh, became somewhat independent from each other, Novi Sad was now part of the Hungarian side of the empire, which had the Magyarization policy. which led to the predominantly Serbian population getting more and more mixed with Hungarians. In 1880, the percentage of Serbians in Novi Sad was now 41% and the percentage of Hungarians had r risen to 25%. And by 1910, the percentage of uh, Hungarians was now, or of who spoke Hungarian, this is how they uh, tracked statistics is which language you spoke, who spoke Hungarian was 39% and Serbians was 34% with the remaining percentages being 17% German and 4% Slovakian. But despite the increasing Hungarization of Novi Sad, in 1918, Novi Sad became part of the newly formed Kingdom of Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes. And by 1921, the majority now once again spoke Serbian. And then in 1929, Yugoslavia was first formed and Novi Sad was a part of it. But during the Second World War, in 1941, the Axis powers partitioned Yugoslavia. So Novi Sad had now uh, once again become part of Hungary. Unfortunately, through the course of this, 5,000 people in the area lost their lives and many more uh, fled the area. As citizens of all nationalities, so the Serbs, Hungarians, and Slovaks, etc., all fought together to attempt to repel the Axis power 
who were attempting to occupy the area. And then later in 1975, the whole city was awarded the People's Hero of Yugoslavia for their efforts in attempting to repel the Axis invasion. Another dark day in the no in Novi Sad's history was October 23rd, 1944, when the Yugoslav partisans of Sirmia and Baca uh, entered the city. So this were these were troops of the uh, newly created military authority who had um, managed to liberate the area from the Axis powers. And they killed was estimated to be over 10,000 people who were perceived to be opponents of this newly formed regime. But thankfully, after this tragic event, Novi Sad became part of the uh, now newly reformed Yugoslavia and began to prosper. The population from this time to uh, so the end of World War II to the breakup of Yugoslavia in this period of time, the population uh, doubled and uh, the area became uh, very industrialized and the economy was growing at a rapid rate. After 1992, Novi Sad became part of the federal state of Yugoslavia. And unfortunately suffered once again another uh, great tragedy during the NATO bombings or NATO bombardment which were uh, related to the uh, Kosovo War of 1999. The result of this bombardment was the destruction of three bridges of the three bridges uh, going across the Danube River. Loss of the city's communications, water, and electricity. And the oil refinery uh, in the city was bombed many times, which led to severe pollution and ecological damage. Later in 2003, the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, which had now been uh, kind of shrunken down, was transformed into the State Union of Serbia and Montenegro. And then in 2006, these two states separated which left Novi Sad as part of the Republic of Serbia. And that has not changed until uh, this day. Which doesn't seem to be 
such a bad thing. So we're in the main square of the city here. As you can tell, uh, Serbians like to be outside, especially when it's a somewhat uh, warm day. We're looking at the parish church of the name Mary. Let's check out some of the other important monuments in Novi Sad's main square. Here we have the town hall. Which still acts as the town hall to this day. Oftentimes the town hall is the old town hall, but it still holds the uh, mayor's office and city council. It has a tower with a bell at the top. So a bell tower, I guess. And the bell would used to ring or be rung when there was a danger abound. But thankfully, it has not rung in many years. So I hope you've enjoyed this city tour and history of Novi Sad. A cool city to visit in Serbia. It's uh, maybe 60 kilometers or so north of the capital city, uh, Belgrade. So if you're going on a vacation to, to Belgrade, it's definitely worth uh, an easy day trip from there. And coming up on the channel will be a video of Belgrade, Serbia's capital city. Also on this channel, I have a video of another pretty and interesting city to visit in Serbia. That is Subotica, the prettiest city you've probably never heard of. And I've also made a video called Journey Through Northern Serbia, where I bicycle through this half of the country and had a great time doing so. Especially thanks to the uh, awesome hospitality and sociability of the Serbian people. Which has been, uh, which was a nice change from uh, the more northern parts of Central Europe where I was before. Not that people were mean, just more open and hospitable here in my opinion. And this was all part of a larger journey, bicycling through Central and Eastern Europe. And before that I bicycled from 
Cape Town, South Africa to Nairobi, Kenya. So bicycling through half of Africa. And before that, I bicycled from Canada, where I'm from, all the way down to Southern Patagonia in Argentina. And all of those videos are available on this very same YouTube channel, Hum of the Earth. And if you'd like to see an interactive map of everywhere that I went and everything that I got to see and do, I have that available over on my website, followthehumoftheearth.com. where you can see the various blog posts and videos that I've made of these places. Sounds like someone's been practicing on the piano. And if you'd like to follow my continuing adventures, once again, bicycling through Central and Eastern Europe. You can do so by clicking on the red subscribe button below the video and clicking on the bell to be notified when new videos come out. So that's gonna do it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good one.